silicone. No silicone. No silicone. No silicone. Keeping it raw, keeping it real, real, real. Hey, what's good, people, man? Welcome to another episode of No Silicone, Keeping It Raw and Keeping It Real. It's your boy, Feeling Hendrix. And today we have someone very interesting with us, a very special guest, in my opinion, um, special yes, in various ways. I, I, l- let me do my thing. <laughs> let, let me do my thing. Very special in various levels, yeah, I mean, um, physically, yeah, I mean, but more importantly, mentally. You know I mean, someone that doesn't think like the average Joe, someone that thinks a little bit outside the box, similar to me, but even, I'd That's say... Awesome. <laughs> slightly further beyond me yeah i mean there's levels to this thinking game and shorty is woke insomnia i can say yeah i mean um miss coco batter welcome to the no silicone podcast thank you it's Thanks my pleasure inviting me. it's all good it's all good how are you doing today i am very close to this microphone yeah. um i'm really good the weather is rude mm-hmm. first and foremost but we move but we move all right cool um it's been valentine's week yeah, I mean, oh, how, how was that week for you? How's it been so far? Do you know what? Uh, I'm not just saying this uh-huh. because I'm single, uh-huh. but I actually think Valentine's is extremely overrated as a day. Okay, And Fine. we need to just stop. Oh, just stop Valentine's? Just like, do you know what? If you're going to put your effort into one day uh-huh. and then not for the rest of the year, uh-huh. then really and truly there's it's absolutely no point. Okay, but... I feel like a lot of people do that. And it's all about stunting now, isn't it? Um, I feel, yeah, I guess it's always been about that. If I see extent. one more video on Instagram with rose petals um, on a bed. Okay. Like well original. Be- <laughs> this is the thing, right? Are you just hating because you didn't get rose petals on no, a bed? Um, I'm sure it's no, not. I've had, I've had situations in the past where, you know, my ex-boyfriend or whatever would make an effort on valentine's day uh-huh. and it's really nice but maybe i'm just not wired in that way okay but this goes into love languages okay okay how how are you wired how you well for me flowers are just not a thing okay actually even the other day i think my ex-manager at work was saying you know he wanted to buy me flowers because I, I was putting my notice in mm. and we literally walked into the store and i said to him please don't buy me flowers it's a waste of your money because right. sh- it doesn't do anything for me it's just you know what? Let, let's 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 rewind. Let's rewind. Let's rewind because um, I, kn- I know I introduced <laughs> you as you now I mean someone with a with a particular way of thinking and stuff like that, okay. and we, we already figured that out right now, especially with your concept of um Valentine's. Okay. Um, you just mentioned um your ex manager at work. Can you give people a little bit of context into like you know what you do? Who who is Miss Coco Better? Okay, so I'm an economist by trade. Economist by trade. Yeah. Um. Well, specifically a government economist, but I'm not going to go into any departments or anything like that because uh-huh. there's a whole code behind the civil service. Privacy, and I think right. you know about that because you work yeah. right there as well. So you're you're an econom- e- economist. Yeah. Um, you're working in the, the civil service, mm-hmm. government-based. And how long have you been doing that for? Uh, I don't know. Over a, a, a year and a bit. A year and a bit. Yeah. Okay. Um, the reason the whole, I, I thought, to bring out what you do is because you mentioned something interesting today. I mean, always the last night we were talking about um, people cheating and stuff like that, right? I think. Oh, you mean when you you populated your Instagram stories with justification <laughs> as to why men cheat? <laughs> so I wasn't trying to justify it. I yeah. was trying to explain it, yeah. Yeah. right? And you mentioned something really interesting. Um, what, what's the principle you, you brought out? So it's benefit realization. Okay, so you said um, something about how guys can be in a relationship but they will have every now and then they'll go through fluctuations mm-hmm. and at some points they do kind of have you know their eyes wander mm-hmm. and and they may have an interest in getting to know another mm-hmm. in this case female mm-hmm. um and i was just saying to you like i think the backlash is a misunderstanding of the underlying mechanisms behind what creates attraction and what makes sometimes a relationship go a bit static okay a bit dull, a bit, you know. Um, and it is, for me, there's economics behind every decision. Okay, and that's this interesting. Is what I was trying to explain. You're saying literally every decision, there's economics behind it? Every single decision any human being makes mm-hmm. is economics. Okay. And actually, when you say economics, a lot of people think it's just money, taxes, and this kind of stuff. But actually, what it originally was, was a philosophy, right? It's mm-hmm. trying to understand human behaviors given the fact that we have scarce resources. And okay. resources can be not just literally oil, money, whatever. It can be within relationships. So okay. 
um, when you're thinking about looking elsewhere, mm -hmm. at those points in time, the value you're attaching to your partner is lower than potentially what you had initially. Okay, and interesting. The other concept, which is economics, uh -huh. is opportunity cost. Right? Opportunity cost, and right? People hear this word all the time, but what it actually means is that every decision you make about or, or any choice you make. Mm -hmm. So let's say you have apples and oranges mm -hmm. your decision to choose the apple over the orange the, the measurement of opportunity cost is what you have foregone what you didn't take okay so if you choose the apple the opportunity cost is the orange okay interesting so when you're in a relationship and you're uh -huh. choosing to be with that one person your opportunity cost is every other potential person you could be with right right and right the reason why you chose that person over everybody else is because you saw them as having more value or in economic terms as utility. Okay. They will bring you a level of satisfaction that you don't think in that moment in time, measuring it up, other people will not give you. Okay. If that changes, then their value in your eyes has changed. Right, right. So yeah. in layman's terms, you're basically saying like, you know, if a guy <clears throat> if a guy is really feeling a girl at that point in time, his main um, motivation to steer away from her or to, to look somewhere else is if he feels within him that her value is dropped for some reason and he can get more from the outside world. Well, okay. yes and no. So the, okay. the, it's yes in, in an overall sense, but that's too simplistic. Okay. So the grass is greener attitude mm. is essentially that, right? Yeah. So right. every single individual has a different definition of what they consider valuable in a romantic partner. Uh -huh. And this is where it gets complicated. Okay. So you may initially have met somebody who fulfilled all of your core needs, mm -hmm. your value. We all have needs, mm -hmm. but they, they differ based on other people. So for example, me, mm -hmm. I always know that if I have three core values and, I, and I'm looking into, you know, getting with a guy, it will usually be honesty, loyalty, and uh, I guess the third one is integrity. So integrity mm -hmm. meaning literally what you say is what you do and your actions match so up. So not the money. Not so if you fuck up on any of those, yeah. then my assigned value to of you initially is going to change. It's going to drop. Okay, makes and, sense. And guys have a, com a completely different thing. And we can bring in, you know, biological functions as well. Mm -hmm. You know, if we go back, you always read this about in biology or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, the hunter, gatherer, slash yeah, carer. Yeah. So all these things come into it. And, and okay. there's no point in unpacking them because they're just going to go on But this is, this is the tangent. thing. Like, if we go with the whole opportunity cost theory, right, um, as to, uh, which I think, logically speaking, on a higher level, it makes sense in, as in the justification, not justification, explanation. Mm -hmm for guys you know um cheating potentially or people cheating because opportunity cost doesn't seem to have a gender basis no right? no opportunity cost is literally behind every every decision. single decision okay what about the concept of you know the cheating thing is if it's opportunity cost it's i guess it's a temporary thing because it's like it's cheating it's not leaving it's not leaving for something they see with better value like you're you're not leaving that partner to go for someone or something that has better or has more yeah, of but something. You, you're assuming that. So, for example, a lot of people mm -hmm. cheat when they know the relationship is already on a decline or a okay. downward so cycle, and, okay. and and then they want to just test out, right. see if there's anybody else out there before they finalize that decision, right? Right. And this is why you'll often find you know, um, cheating will occur when there's a breakdown of communication in a relationship yeah. and they're, they're both unhappy, but they might not be expressing it. Uh -huh. Or you get completely the other side where you have guys or girls that cheat, but assume they're never going to be caught. And, uh -huh. and, and that's part of them being able to commit to this long-term thing right. because they know that they're not actually, not actually sacrificing as much. Okay. But again, underlying all of these decisions is something that I think is, the definition of what love is mm -hmm. and that's how you form attachments form an attachment attachment styles which are determined from childhood mm -hmm. shape your current attachment style as an adult okay um and i think before i don't want to overcomplicate things i don't want to jump to attachment styles oh. but i think pre-attachment styles people when they talk about relationships and love and expressing it and or not receiving enough love mm -hmm. tend to focus on these love languages right? okay. so they categorize how what, what mode or vector yeah that line that love is being you know received, received or given. yeah so i don't know if we, if we go through what attachment style uh, if we go through sorry love languages uh -huh. the five right i think as far as my memory serves mm -hmm. me there's a guy Dr. Gary Chapman, mm -hmm. 
He got really big in the 80s. He wrote this massive book. I think he was a pastor. Mm-hmm. And what he did was he, he categorized love in five different ways, how you communicate it, mm-hmm. and basically wrote this book that tried to tell people how they should communicate love to their partner uh-huh. based on what their partner's preferred primary love language is. And okay. he literally sees them as languages. And to go through the five, uh-huh. I think everybody knows it. I don't. You don't? No, I don't. Okay, so well, I, I know first, what I like though. You know, okay, no, you know what it is? I'm gonna ask you what you like first. Okay. Tell me what it is, and okay. then I, and then I'll do the five. Fine. Um, in terms of a woman, I, I appreciate commitment. Yeah, you know I mean, so in terms of um, but how would you express that? Prioritization, yeah. right? Um, knowing that yo, my partner comes first, right? <laughs> so feeling like um, I have my own needs. You feel me? But I feel like sometimes it's okay to sacrifice um some of my you know grand grand scale requirements for my partner's immediate requirement because that's more important okay, yeah i mean so but you, my thing is i need someone to show me that i need someone to be able to be like you know what babe yeah i know i wanted these shoes but for the grand scheme of things we need to save for a house and we need to save for you to buy you know um the studio or whatever right so um she's willing to just like shut the hell up and um <laughs> Okay, wait. I need. I need <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's fine. I'm not. I'm not even gonna go into that. You're, but you're talking about the end result of how you will feel once they express something yes. to you, right? But yeah. you, what you haven't actually touched on mm. is the love language itself. So maybe if I say the five, you, okay. you'll know exactly what it's. I think, it, I think it will jump out at you, right? Help me. So the first, mm-hmm. and there's no particular order. Number one is quality time. Quality time. And by quality time with your partner, mm-hmm. it means in person, but it's actually more to do with listening. So when they're in front of you and you're doing these little things together, whether it's running errands or going on a date or shopping, whatever it is, Mm -hmm. when they are talking to you and you're talking to them, you feel you are being listened to and that creates the word quality in that time. Second is gifts. So giving Mm -hmm. gifts Mm -hmm. or receiving. Um, And so that's literally, you know, it's pretty obvious. Mm -hmm. You like somebody to, but it's a thought process behind those gifts. So it's somebody who's showing they know you well enough to to buy you X. Something that's specific to you. Specific to you. Um, Some people just like gifts anyway. (laughs) If they're materialistic, generally, actually, any gift still falls into that category. Right, as long as it's something. Yeah, 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 cool. Um, the third one is physical touch. Uh-huh. And that can literally be from PDO or holding hands to sex. Mm-hmm. It's just across the board. It's that intimacy, physical. I feel like every, every guy likes this love language. Yeah, and it, by the way, all five languages most people like, it's not that. It's just that you will have a primary one and a secondary every one. Every guy so there's a categorization. has this as a primary love language. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm every, just saying. every human being does. Okay. But in terms of how it goes, how high up it goes in that weighting or that right. scale, maybe, maybe, yeah. Okay. Um, the I so said that's three. Four is uh, racking my brains now. Acts of service. Yes, acts of service. So it's somebody or your partner essentially. Um, showing their love by doing all the little things that maybe maybe you're really busy you've got you're under pressure you've got a lot of stuff Mm. to do you've got studio to stay for Mm. or whatever it is and they're going out of their way to do the things that they know you maybe don't have time to do it's just Mm. coming home and finding your dinner cooked it's Mm. it's knowing that the washing up's done it's it's that you went out of your way to know that you want to take a burden away from them and through acts of those service that service is 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 that category okay and and the the other one is words of affirmation right and that really goes down to complimenting them acknowledging them and appreciating them that. verbally and, and it's 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 and it's really 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 important for some people to hear from their partner so uh, how, how how important they are how much they love them so right. and these are literally words okay. so those are the five okay, okay. so based on what you said uh-huh. you i'm gonna guess your attachment type mm-hmm. right your attachment type is probably avoidant um but uh, We'll get to at the end. Like, I'm gonna d- look at your face. You're like, <laughs> we don't. What does that um, mean? I don't, so I don't avoid that. What you, what you talking about? I'm gonna take it back one step. Okay. About Willis. <laughs> so you got five live languages. Uh-huh. You clearly said you don't like words of affirmation. Yeah. It was not. It's not important to you. No. What we need to remember is this book was written to say find out your partner's love language, sure. adapt yourself to give them or communicate love in the way they like it. Right. But what people tend to talk about today is they go, this is my love language. Or you get those funny Twitter things that goes, oh, you know, I don't know, um, pancakes are my love language. Everybody's talking about their love language. It's by your partner. They're forgetting that, yeah, it's supposed to be the other way around. Right, 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 um, right, right. My biggest critique of this categorization across the five is that 
firstly, obviously, as soon as you label something and you make them into categories, people are like, well, I don't completely fit into one. Right. One's not my primary, but actually it can be a mix. Um, there's that. And the second thing is actually, I don't think personally that love has those five languages. I think there's one language of love and that's attunement. That oh, is uh, who, being uh, present. Being present um, in the moment. Uh, absolutely. With your partner. A ch- being in sync in and tune, whatever you right, want to call right. it. Did you make that term up, attunement yourself, or is that real? Attunement, no, no, attunement, attunement is a term, mm-hmm. but that's how I've always viewed what love should be. Okay, interesting. It should be, you, that's why sometimes you go, oh, I met this person, we have amazing chemistry, I don't mm-hmm. know what it is, I can't put my finger on it, we're just in line, we're in sync. Mm-hmm. And the reason you feel that is, or in my opinion, that's, that's the main love language, because right. you can do all five of these love languages, and your partner might have words of affirmation as their... A primary one you might be saying oh i love you you're fucking sick mm-hmm, you're mm-hmm. so sexy or this or that and if you're not attuned with one another yeah. actually that's futile right right and that that attunement love language is an interesting one it's not something that you can create or mold you, or you can, can you? you can create it but this is the thing is uh-huh. that the reason it's so much harder than people realize mm. to be in real love mm. i think these are my opinions mm-hmm. Is because people are focusing on how they communicate it in these five ways, let's say, mm. but they're not looking at what their attachment style is. And right. that's why I'm coming back to the attachment style. Okay. And you said mine was avoidance. So yeah, there's there's three main categories of attachment styles. Okay. And this is all psychology and this is something that was established in like I'd say the fifties, sixties. I can't remember who it was, but it's a pretty big, you know, psychologist. Uh huh. Um, I'm pretty sure he came around just after Freud or probably around that time, I'm not sure. But it's still used today, even okay. in all your therapy. And the three main are, God, I feel like this is a TED talk. <laughs> <laughs> the three main <laughs> are is secure attachment style. Mm-hmm. You've got anxious attachment style. Mm-hmm. And you've got avoidant attachment style. Okay. Now, apparently, 60% of people fall into the secure category. I think it's a lot lower and then you have like a split in the 40% for the other two. It's worth quickly doing a sense of secure is essentially you very easily uh, communicate your love. You mm-hmm. get close to people very easily. You don't have any fear or anxiety associated to it. And you, mm-hmm. and you tend to build these communicative relationships very quickly across the board. Mm-hmm. And then you've got anxious. Now, the thing with anxious attachment style people, whatever you want to call them, is they have constant maybe even subconscious thing that they're not quite deserving of love or their partners are better than them right right so they tend to uh, uh, mold themselves adapt themselves to try and meet the partners. Meet their partner's needs yeah. um and then the avoidant and i should say i think if anyone's watching this probably like, there's more to it than that mm-hmm. but i'm just making it simple the avoidant one does fall into um dismissive avoidant and fearful avoidant but right. i'm just going to say avoidant avoidant types they they tend to want a lot more autonomy and independence within their relationships. Mm-hmm. And it's not that they don't like intimacy or being close. If, if anything, deep down, they want to have a close relationship with their mm-hmm. partners, but they struggle because simultaneously, they constantly have a need for being in solitude and not wanting to get too close. And, okay. and, and there is a certain level of emotional unavailability there, but there are reasons why we're all like this. Right, so it links into something, either like childhood experiences, relationship, past it's trauma, all, all yes. that stuff. I think yes. uh, his name is John Bowlby. Bol- Bowlby. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's exactly. a psychiatrist. Yeah. And you said um, you think that I'm the avoidant type. I don't think you're... I don't think, yeah, but the reason I said that is yeah. because all you said was you want a commit, you want a partner who's committed to you, but you mm-hmm. want to do your own thing as well. Yeah. You want them to shut their F up or whatever. Yeah, I, pfft, I didn't, I didn't and you know what? I'll, mis- I'll edit that avoidance out. are mistakenly <laughs> categorized as narcissists, but they're right. not. They're okay. not. I'm not um, a narcissistic, guys. I'm not. <coughs> Um, wait, 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 before we, before you break down the categories, <laughs> what about you? Where do you fit in this? I'm, because I feel I'm like I'm fearful avoidant. Fearful avoidant. I'm avoidant, and and I'll explain why. Um, basically, to go into the avoidant style, usually if you go, you always go back to the kind of childhood thing and and, mm-hmm. and parental and how how your parents expressed love to you. And mm-hmm. it, and by the way, I should say there's no right or wrong in being any of these. Things. Right. This is just an outcome, right, uh-huh, of, uh-huh. of what you've experienced. 
I grew up in a single parent household and my mum was like my mum and my dad at the same time. We didn't mm. have much, all of this stuff. But my mum was so ride or die for me. Mm. But the way that she expressed love was very much acts of service. Okay. Um, and actually to the point, so overprotective and so I, I, her children almost replaced her partner. So okay. we became her world, right? right that right, is right. her purpose. That is why she's here. That's everything. And what tends to happen with people or children who grow up like that is they become quite enmeshed and quite codependent there. Right. And there is a constant desire when you're growing up of going, I can get really emotionally close to someone like my mom, mm. but I also am really struggling to get that pull away of like that independence. Okay. Um, and that's one reason. The other side of avoidance is that actually your parents are, um, if anything, maybe they're going through a divorce and they almost treat you like the adult already and they're mm. saying to you, you know, your dad's this or your dad's that or whatever and, mm. and they kind of don't give you that, that chance to... To be a child. To be to be a child. Yeah. There's also trauma involved yeah, in that. Sure. And you can have, like, if you go on an extreme scale on the big kind of T, big trauma stuff, mm -hmm. you know, sexual abuse and all this type of stuff, where actually that, that inbuilds that thing of you don't trust that parental figure. So what what are your traits then? How do your traits come out in your um, what do you, avoidant? What avoidant? Avo I'm, I'm, so I'm fearful avoidant. Fearful avoidant, right. So how does that come I out in, in relationships for you then? Okay, so for me, and actually this is a, probably a recent thing, yeah. kind of. Um, so I am the kind of person that I'm very good at building that initial um, emotional attachment uh -huh. and, and i can do that and the, and the other guy so i haven't i'm not going to say who it is but like there was there was a time this time about this time last year actually i met somebody and they were really really like we were on the same wavelength i would say we were in attunement, attunement. If anything attunement. And, and, and avoidant types can often build that very quickly because right. again like with my mom i'm able to have very close emotional relationships with mm -hmm. people but i will self-sabotage it as soon as i realize that yeah. actually love is potentially on that horizon right, and right. i'm falling and i'm feeling those feels yeah i get really avoidant and try I not will to run away. Trying to like, get lost in it. I will run away. Or too far in it. Yeah, because it's scary because part of you, it's an irrational thing, remember? Uh -huh. but a big part of you will go, oh my God, oh my God, I'm going to get hurt. I need to go into my cave. Mm. I need to control this situation. Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll say that we need to be friends. Right, right, right. Even right. though I low-key have feelings for yeah. you. That, that's what happens. So self-sabotage that. But then, um, okay, so if we're bringing into real-life examples, right, so you'll do something like that, you'll mm -hmm. self-sabotage it, maybe tell the guy, look, let's be homies. Yeah. But then the guy's going to try and fight, like, if he's really feeling you. If he's, Unless if he, he's also an avoidant type. Right, but if, he, why. if you do find a guy that isn't, because if he's also avoidant, then he'll be like, okay, cool. Yeah, you and feel he'll, me? Play he'll, he'll, he'll play and it off cool. Both of you will do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if he's the opposite, right? Um, if he's okay, so if yeah. he's the anxious, right? Be, yeah, which right. one are you going to? If you're anxious attachments, anxious attachment style, mm -hmm. the worst relationships, all this toxicity we keep hearing this key word, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Most of the time, it's anxious attachment people mm -hmm. with avoidant attachment people in relationships, and opposites do attract. Remember, right, right, yeah. And what happens is, if you've got an anxious type of person, remember they think you're better than them. Mm. They don't have that solid self-esteem self-assurance that you know what i'm deserving of love and yeah. actually if this person's reject they're very rejection sensitive getting rejection mm -hmm. in the form of let's just be friends mm -hmm. can trigger mm -hmm. a childhood thing in them as well right which is usually related to maybe they had parents who didn't give them enough time who yeah. were constantly working or they just yearned for that connection that emotional bond and, yeah. and actually you see that a lot in the old school kind of white middle class or like a higher class mm -hmm. kind of even ro royal family is a good example yeah yeah how they raise you you're raised by a nanny more you yeah, don't have your yeah, mom there sure. as much and, and you yearn that kind of thing so do you have this whole thing if you're the anxious um person and you're with an avoidant type um and then the avoidant type is telling you that yo listen we should be friends you start having the whole thing i'm not good enough yeah you, you, what you know? they will do yeah. is hit you up 24 7 they won't give you your own space right. you'll say to them i think i need some space and they will be the person hitting up your phone driving up to your house waiting outside yeah. crying their eyes out doing some crazy and then they tend to be uh passive aggressive yeah um or if not that to manipulate what they, the result obviously or they will be very 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 aggressive and vocal yeah um and everybody needs to understand that well again it's my opinion these are traumas that mm -hmm. have not been healed, right? Yeah, 100%. So if somebody is being, you know, angry, they're mm -hmm. just hurt. Mm -hmm. And if someone's being avoidant, they're just scared. Yeah, it, it, it's, these, it's these things constantly at play. Um, yeah, that's interesting, though, because um, I think every episode I have, when I have, like, <coughs> a, a, a woman as a guest or a female as a guest, and 
I, I get into this conversation or this theory about the crazy girlfriend, the crazy ex, right? Yeah. And it sounds like this is this could potentially be one of the places that it stems from. Absolutely. You feel me? If you're like an Absolutely. anxious type, for instance. Yeah, and this is where love languages come in. Uh-huh. This is why. Imagine trying to understand these five areas uh-huh. without understanding what the actual underlying attachment type yeah. is because attachment types determine how you assign meaning to action. Sure. Right? So somebody who's an anxious type will see somebody being quiet for a day or going into their thinking space as problematic. Oh, yeah. they're rejecting me. Whereas Something's an wrong. avoidant type will go, oh, they're just taking time out. It's calm. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not reading into that too sure, much. Sure, right? sure, so sure. their assigned meaning will determine how you're going to view even any of those long love languages. Makes sense. Makes so sense. like my, well actually, you know what you should do? Guess what my primary love language is. Based on what I've told you about my attachment. Right, so you don't like gifts. <laughs> Let me go through the list. Let me go through the list. So, I'll go through so it's gifts, it's words of affirmation, words of it's affirmation. quality time. Uh-huh. Um, acts of service. Acts of service, yes. Right. Um, um, what's the other one? Quality time, acts of service. Physical you, touch. Yeah, physical touch, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, so yours would... Can, you can have more than one, right? Or is you it have, there's a you primary? Can have a primary, according to his theory, you can have a primary and a secondary. Okay, fine. Um, I think yours is quality time. Um, I don't think it's acts of service. I don't think it's words of affirmation. Wait, are you talking about how I express or how how I want to receive it? How you want to receive it? Okay. I so personally think it's, okay. it's quality time as your primary one and physical touch. Am I am I on the? You're actually really on point. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. how I like to receive yeah. it. Booyah! Sorry, sorry, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah. I like I like quality time because remember avoidance tend to not trust people. Uh huh. They just inherently. So the more time you have with that mofo, the more you know what's going on. You yeah. know where he's at. You no, know what no, he's no, doing. Not okay, even in that no, sense. I'm more okay. in, You can read authenticity. You're really hyper vigilant usually, uh-huh. you, and that's probably why I'm an analyst. You, you know, you can sense change in behavior. Very, very a tiny granular level changes you, yeah. you can sense so when you have quality time it's the only way that you really feel like there's an authenticity there and yeah. that's probably why gifts don't mean that much to me because right. i don't see the t- tangible object sure as it's not the gift that's no. doing anything for me it's the person right it's yeah. i don't get to know the gift i get to know the person yeah and physical thing. touch okay. is definitely my second one because mm-hmm. i'm better and this probably goes out to i how i put out uh, okay. or show my love I find it a lot easier to um, be physical with somebody mm. and show them, even if it's just a long hug. Not, mm. It doesn't even have to be sexual. And that, for me, goes deeper and communicates all the things I struggle to communicate in terms of my emotions. Okay, so, and in terms of, um, that's, so that's what you receive. And what about in terms of giving? What is your, obviously we've got physical touch as, as one. Mm, yeah, I think the primary way I actually give is acts of service. Okay. And I think that's me mirroring my mother. Right, um, it'd probably be acts of service and I'm quite good with words of affirmation but I get fed up if, if, I'm, if I'm with an anxious keep reinforcing type person, someone. yeah oh my god that's <laughs> the biggest turn off for me in the world is if somebody consistently needs reinforcement oh my god because uh, again and validation validation it's, uh, I am very attracted to self-assurance yeah, yeah, yeah 100% and so if, if you need me to consistently remind you why I think you're the shit yeah, unfortunately, ironically, I'm going to start thinking you're not so the shit. So this is interesting, right? So let's say you're in tune with someone, yeah. right? Um, and then you realize that, okay, so this person has that, you know, certain things, like this whole they need a reinforcement and anxious type. Mm. You feel, but you're attracted to them because you, you're in tune. There's something that is an energy. You feel what I'm saying? Are you saying that I'd be attracted to somebody who consistently needs words of affirmation? But you don't know that yet. You feel what I'm saying? And then you get to know them a little bit better. Yeah. And then you start noticing these 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 features, whatever, right? These traits. Yeah. Is it is it like an instant I'm out? Or is it like, you know what? I know what they need because I know the love language. And now let me speak their tongue. Or okay. is it for you? I'm not changing. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you what. This, yeah. this is what, this is, this is really what will play out. Um, and this goes back to the secure star. I remember six Secure yeah. attachment types can adapt themselves according to whether their partner's avoidant sure. or anxious. They sure. will be those people who will go, right. you know what? That's all right. I'm just going to understand what they need. I struggle to do that. Right, I'm right. avoidant. Right. So actually an ex of mine, I realized was like that. And he was more, in my opinion, was probably a, a the anxious type. Mm. Um, but I didn't realize it off the bat. And I struggled so much to adapt myself because I started to lose attraction okay and interesting yeah 
And the reason that is, is back to the economics. Mm -hmm. Always. I assign value most of the time. Everyone's personal in this, but I, I assign value to a guy or a higher value when I feel like they're more scarce. I assign value or a higher value to guys for me personally when I feel like they're very self-assured and quite confident and have ha have that basis. Of, it, it's, it's a masculine energy as well yeah. that ties into that and feminine energy too, but you know. Um, so what happened was I started to lose attraction. Mm -hmm. And the reason I lost attraction was based on the economic theory is obviously s the more scarce something is, the higher the value. Right. If you go into a shop and someone says, this handbag is on sale. Mm -hmm. um, it's the last one. And, you know, it, maybe it's only 10% off. You're more likely to buy that handbag than if you went to a store, saw 10 of the same handbags yeah. for 30% off. Very true. You'd probably buy the first one more. Why? Yeah. Because there's this associated higher value with scarcity. Right, right. Right. So when somebody needs a consistent level of validation from me, especially through words of affirmation, I then go, why don't you think you're good enough? Yeah. Are you not as valuable as I thought? Yeah, sure. And it's that. And, and obviously this happens very subconsciously. There's nothing that you go, oh, I'm doing X, Y, and so Z. So this is the thing. I mean, <clears throat> you've said it happens subconsciously, but obviously to you, it's not. Well, I it's, analyze it's both. myself. There you go, right? So it's both, right? So it happens subconsciously, but then it's it's a conscious thing because you know of it now. You feel what I'm saying? Now you know of it in retrospect. You don't know it's in the moment happening in the moment. You don't. Okay, so you don't analyze yourself in the moment. You don't. Do you think it's possible to, as like I feel like you you might do, but maybe you're not aware of it. But if we do retrospect right now, yeah. but in real life situations, yeah. you're in a situation with a guy, mm -hmm. and then you realize, oh, I'm 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 um. I'm liking him less, so I'm falling off the, the bandwagon of whatever. Do you not in that moment start thinking, why? And then you assess, oh, okay, it's because this dude no, is No, because this, this is, a, remember, this is a retrospective analysis. When I was in the moment, yeah. I would pull away. Okay. And I'd just go, I just, I'm really stressed out. I've got all this stuff going on in my life. Uh -huh. And then I just, and don't get me wrong, I wouldn't just be that cold hard person. I would uh -huh. give them little bits that I could, but I'd find that it drained me. Yeah, yeah it starts to drain. And I would just yeah. start being snappier maybe, or yeah. I'd just go into my silent cave. Yeah. Um, and then it's only later down the line. That's, oh, actually, I'm not really into the physical touch thing right yeah. now. Maybe it's just, I blamed it on stress so much because I was doing so much at the time. So I was like, oh, I'm just, I've lost my libido. So you kind of blame on everything else, but looking back, you're looking at it as like, okay, it's the types. <clears throat> it's definitely the types, But this yeah. is the thing, right? So if you're the kind of person that your love, these are your specific love languages that you want, does that mean you can only, oh, happy, you can only be happy with someone that's just like you? No, um, two reasons why that's a no mm -hmm. is because, remember, although it's, underlying or well, the underlying things based on your childhood they do say that um your love languages can change um or oh, 20 for 20 i think the figure was something like 25 percent of people's love languages change every four years uh -huh. so bear in mind that in, in every four years you probably had a relationship that traumatized you or you learned something from it or you went through a life experience that did something else and it can uh -huh. completely change uh -huh. from it's all based on that trauma um, and you can also go from avoidant and anxious to more secure Right. Based on maybe a relationship, whatever. Right, but that's that's the the the, the trail, the journey of the yeah. relationship. But we're talking about like in this moment in time. Like, yeah. would you be looking for someone? Like, one of the questions I, I'd, I'd have as like a starter question for a lot of this podcast was, would you date you or would you have sex with you? You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, that my, being said, considering I mean, the yeah. well, yeah, yes. <laughs> but no, like, would you date you? You feel um, me? And do you think? Like, it would be an easy... <laughs> yeah, do you know what? I'm very... Uh, the reason I would date me mm -hmm. is, is only because I'm emotionally unavailable and I tend to have the highest attraction to emotionally unavailable guys. Okay. Um, so you're attracted to emotionally unavailable guys. I tend... And you know what? It's, it's, an, it's, a, it's an unconscious thing. Mm. Um, and you know how you always hear girls go, oh, he's emotionally unavailable. Why do I always attract the same kind of guys? Mm -hmm. And the reason I do, I have an attraction for them is because... It's a scarcity thing again. Right, right, right. They right. tend to be a bit hot and cold, and I need the challenge. Yeah. I really need the challenge because that validates me if I win that over, right? right? So the reason I date me is because I'm on un emotionally unavailable. Okay. And I only realized that very recently. And actually, somebody told me it. Right, they were right, like, you, right. you realize you're emotionally unavailable. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. It's, it's changed my life. Okay. Um, you're 20. 28. You're 28. Yeah. And you only just realized that. Uh, yeah. But in the grand scheme of things, we said earlier that, you know, um, your 30s, like new 20s, et cetera, et cetera, right? 
So yeah. y- you've just realized that you're still young in real in the realization, right? And obviously, yeah. the more you know about yourself, the better you are as a person, and the better your experiences are with other people. Mm. And there's still people that are like in their 30s, 40s, 50s that don't really know about themselves. That self awareness, right? Mm-hmm. And I guess your relationships going forward can only get better with that self-realization. Absolutely. It's really interesting that you only figured that out now, though, right? I figured it out because I forced myself over the last, I'd say, six to eight months to understand why I was hung up on someone. Okay. And when you really try to understand why, Mm -hmm. you start to realize why you care so much about Uh their actions. And it goes into that. And you you just go into Pandora's box, essentially. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. All right, fine. We need to sign off soon, but we might come back to this another time. I mean, in terms of like, it's Valentine's and everything, right? And and I know you said your manager tried to take you out for um, for to get flowers, flowers, right? And you were like, no, that ain't for me. (laughs) Okay. So going forward, to, for people that are in like situationships, relationships, and they're feeling like, um, no, nah, this ain't really for me. You mm. feel me? Um, my question to you was, were you vocal about it with the whole oh, flowers yeah. thing? Oh, okay. Literally, w- so blunt. I'm a, I'm a blunt person. Okay. Yeah. So how would you advise someone like with the idea of love languages? You know what I mean? What do they need to take into consideration when they're looking for a partner or when they're in a relationship? With love language, I guess the con- to conclude our entire conversation, yeah. they actually need to take into account the attachment style before the love language. Because as soon style. as you realize that style of attachment, you can automatically understand why they prefer certain types of love languages. Okay. You need to start off with, with that, that, uh, that foundation first. Uh-huh. So actually, it's, I'm from now on, I'm just going to have a blunt comment. I will ask the questions associated to different attachment styles. I don't need to sit there and go, so what's your attachment style? Right. I will just ask them, okay, so like... What were, you, what were your parents like growing up? Uh-huh, uh-huh, and, and you can get an idea. Yeah. And then you'll probably go, okay, cool. So you're the anxious type. That means you need a lot more words of affirmation. Sure, sure. So get to know your attachment style and get to know your potential partner's attachment style. And that yeah, just Google it. There's so many tests online. You yeah. can find out what yours is. Okay. Um, there's so many. And this is, this is from the 50s, 60s psychology. It's still used today. It's nothing that novel. Mm. Um, and there are pl- and, uh, and therapists use it themselves. Today. Yeah. So I would say go online, have a look around, see what, understand yourself. Okay. Okay. Understand yourself, self awareness, self reassurance, self validation. Great stuff, Coco. I really appreciate your insight today. Yeah, you know I mean into love languages. I hope you enjoy this conversation yourself. Thank you. Yeah, you know I mean definitely be having you on for for a lot more in the future, and also looking forward to your own. Yeah, at hopefully. some point. Yeah, yeah. You yeah, know what I mean? Stay tuned. We'll stay see. tuned. All right, guys, man. No silicone. Keeping it raw. Keeping it real. Yeah, you know I mean signing out. What's it called? No silicone. No silicone. No silicone. Podcast. Keeping it raw, keeping it real, 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 real.